What happened at your work which caused multiple people to all quit at once? The boss went off on a tirade on me for something that wasn't my fault and I got him to scream people like you are expendable pieces in this company and I can replace you tomorrow if I wanted to. 80% of the engineers quit the next day. Simply didn't show up. Including me. From what I know. The entire project folded because my now ex-boss couldn't find people to replace us because no one wanted to do the kind of work he was looking for at the salary he was paying. He <laughs> he. That backfired. There was one guy who was going to be fired for coming in late constantly. However. Many of the potential replacements his company interviewed wanted a ridiculously high salary. Turns out. That one guy lowballed himself on his salary. All of a sudden. Coming in 15 minutes late each day became quite the bargain. I had worked at a grocery store for about 3 years before moving from courtesy clerk basically bagger custodian to helper clerk stocker. The grocery department wanted to save costs on personnel. But couldn't fire anyone or lay anyone off due to the union. So they started cutting back hours and literally told us when someone quits. Everyone else will get more hours. We were supposed to be 40 hour employees and they had us at 32 hours. Two people quit and we were down to 24 hours. A third person quit. Down to 16 hours. I don't know what their plan was. But they didn't give us more hours as people left. This almost sounds like they wanted a specific someone to quit but didn't have cause to just dismiss them. That's the best theory I've heard. They decided after 6 years it was time to do a drug test. Even lost the CEO in that great idea. The CEO reports to the board of directors. The board wanted to get rid of the CEO for cause. Everyone else was collateral. If the board wanted to get rid of the CEO they would hardly need to drug test for it. The board votes. The CEO leaves. That's how corporations work. The only thing that it might affect would be his severance package. You're right. However. Golden parachutes often have exceptions for firing due to illegal activity. It wouldn't be the first time a CEO was targeted by a board. Cancelled all raises and bonuses for everyone except the CEO. His wife financial and HR. And his son utterly useless IT in a year where we have record profits and brought in almost double the clients on top of announcing they aren't looking to hire more people when we were already overwhelmed. Good part about it was when the majority of us quit they lost almost every single client shortly afterwards to their competitors and the company is now defunct. This feels really good to read. Word slipped out that the whole accounting department was being replaced so they all resigned all at once. My mom's company did that. Decided to outsource all the accounting staff. Then was surprised that all the accountants quit. Even the ones they wanted to keep on to help transition the books. She was one of the ones they asked to stay. And she refused lol. We stopped providing free coffee. And we're so cheap that we sold our coffee maker. This was in Seattle. So a couple of people bought their own coffee makers to put in their cubes. That tripped the breakers several times so it was very disruptive since our computers would shut down. Management then said no coffee allowed in the office at all. We lost four very good engineers. Management then said no coffee allowed in the office at all. Who could possibly think this kind of policy would fly? That's unreal. Sounds like the grounds for a damn riot. Tattoo shop owner who lived in another state hired some asshole to come revamp the shop. I had been managing for three years at this point and he just expected me to teach him how to do my job so he could replace me. That guy had no clue how to run a shop. Plus the owner had been embezzling money for her coke habit and had blamed the longest standing artist at the shop for lost revenue. Accused him of stealing. 
I did the books. No one was stealing. She was nuts. Anyway. All the artists and I mutinied and left at the same time. Beep them over good. With that idiot at the helm the shop didn't last a year after we all left. Many years ago in high school I worked at a movie theater. The place was pretty poorly run from the moment I started there. We never got paid on time and management was basically a bunch of lazy jackasses who sat in the office talking all day and never actually did any managing. It would have been hard for things to have gotten any worse but after a couple of months they brought in new management who seemed to want to make it their personal mission to run the theater as poorly as possible. They first decided to implement a new policy requiring all projectionists to wear ties. Despite the fact that projectionists are never seen by the public. Not to mention that tiny little detail that the projectionists worked around giant. Rapidly spinning objects that a tie could get caught in. Management refused to reconsider the policy and every single projectionist quit as a result. They then decided that the door people of which I was one. Who were always scheduled seven days a week. Would now only be scheduled on the weekends and refused to reassign any of us to concessions on the weekdays so we wouldn't lose ours. As a result, almost every single door person quit. Including me. After that they started imposing impossible cleanliness standards on concessions. Things like requiring them to scrape popcorn kernels out of the cracks in the trim behind the popcorn machines. Concessions was there until 5 am every night trying to meet their standards. Most of the concession people quit as a result. By my count the theater went from a staff of about 50 to a staff of about 12 in 3 weeks. I swung by about a month after I quit and found out that entire management staff had been fired and replaced yet again by an entirely new one. Ones who actually seemed to be running the theater properly. My best guess is that the previous management had been told to whip the theater into shape and they were idiots who had no idea how to effectively do that. Or they were there simply to cut staff. To be the bad guys. Now the new managers come in. Hire a bunch of people but fewer than 30. And look like winners to the 12 people that stayed. Maybe. Sometimes I get suspicious. I used to work at a grocery store. We had a manager who was hired to run the store but not be the franchisee and when his numbers were satisfactory enough, they would let him franchise it. So far toward a year later and this guy was doing everything he could. Making the store run and look wonderful and all the staff liked one another. Out of nowhere he is told they are putting in a franchisee bid and tell him that if he wants it, he can have it. He bids. But so does one of the district manager's sons. He gets it. Original manager is of course pissed but accepts to stay as the grocery manager if he keeps pay rate. Fast forward and the new franchisee gets fired for not following regulations. They do the franchisee bid a second time and tell original manager the same thing. He can have it if he wants it. They give the store to another person a second time. I felt bad for the guy because all of his hard work and how well he treated me. Store starts going downhill causing a lot of change and a lot of pissed off people. I was the first one to walk out as all of ours were cut. The new franchisee never spoke to anyone but would bitch if we didn't do things her way. I find out 14 more people quit within a month. We just had a company wide except the directors of course pay cut of 20% and a 4 day work week instead of 5. Everyone one including myself are currently looking for work and they will lose their workforce oh so quickly. When I was 16. I worked in the concession stand at a minor league baseball stadium. Minimum wage at the time was 5. 15 slash HR. This job paid 8. And it was always in the evening so it was perfect work for a high school student. The only bad thing was our management was terrible. The main manager would throw toddler tantrums about once a shift over stupid bulls peep. Like not ordering enough of a specific beer she did the ordering or running out of pre-cut lemons for tea. 
One night the stadium was running a promotion and it was incredibly busy, easily 2-3x the normal volume of customers. We were all working our asses off handling multiple roles each with absolutely no downtime. Although we all cleaned as we worked. Nobody had a chance to do thorough cleaning for the whole shift because of the never-ending horde of hungry baseball fans. The manager showed up three to four hours late per usual and throws the biggest beeping tantrum ever over the unswept floor. Finally. She announces listen up you lazy beeps. Minimal work gets minimal pay. Everybody is being paid minimum wage tonight because you slobs won't clean up anything. Both of our bartenders and the bar back quit on the spot. Which caused a chain reaction. We all took off our aprons and hats to leave. She blocked the exit and was red in the face from screaming. So one of the cooks climbed out of one of the big serving windows where we served customers. So I did the same and most of the staff followed. Bear in mind that this all happened in front of like 200 customers. Of course. My final paycheck got lost so I had to file a wage theft complaint with the Texas Workforce Commission. How that wage theft complaint go down? Sounds like it'd be super satisfying just to slip the envelope into the letterbox. Filed the complaint. Submitted my clock in and clock out receipts for the week we got paid weekly and previous pay stubs to verify my pay rate. After like three weeks. I was contacted by the person handling my claim that my previous employer had mailed me a check for the whole amount I was owed plus a penalty. The check arrived within a few days. The penalty was 25 IIRC. Later that year. The same employer refused to provide my W-2 for tax filing so I filed a complaint with the IRS and used my pay stubs with a special form to complete my taxes. I don't know what happened regarding that but that lady's life imploded for non-work related reasons. She got caught cheating on her husband. Then got caught faking cancer for sympathy. Sounds like a wild ride. Promised a bonus at the end of the year. Told everyone they will not be giving out bonuses due to the low company performance. Company had a successful year. Boss was in the middle of building a multi-million dollar home. Brother-in-law manager just bought a nice home that year. I quit on the spot. Many others quit soon after. Company changed from 5 to 8 hour shifts to a 12 hour shift rotation. Edit. Most of the people that quit were the ones that were on straight day shift and didn't want to or couldn't work night shifts. I worked at a factory after they changed from an 8 hour rotation to a 12 hour rotation. For most people. The extra time off in the schedule was better than working fewer hours at a time. For some. Though. Their jobs went from 9 to 5 mf to the 12 hour rotation that included nights. They all quit. Oh beeping boy. I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings for a few years as a line cook. Two different stores. Same beeping pay. It was the type of work where you ask for a raise and they scoff and say yeah. Me too. Anyways. I had been pretty dead set on quitting sooner or later. Our kitchen was very small. Most people ended up closing 4 to 5 days a week with doubles on the weekends. While still attending school full time as it was a college town. On Super Bowl Beep ING Sunday. A useless co-worker who ducked out in the bathroom most the ship finally stops showing. And in response the managerial staff delegated closing to my pal Jay. Dude was a beeping delight to be around. Hands down the best co-worker ever. Jay had told them that due to being a full-time student, he no longer wanted to be first in last out 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. 1 a.m. on the weekends. They basically told him to go beep himself. And that they don't have any more shifts for him. Immediately. Me and one other cook walked to the office and quit on the spot. Buffalo Wild Wings lost four cooks on Super Bowl Sunday leaving them with seven full-time students on the schedule. It was a managerial speep show.
I had a similar speepuation at Grease Monkey in high school. They kept scheduling me for three close. When I applied, I made it abundantly clear that I got out of school at three and would get there at three. 10. About week two, the manager pulls me into the office and says you have been late every day. When I told him I have school, he said you need to decide what's important. I laughed. As I thought he was kidding. He wasn't. I told him he could let me go if it wasn't going to work. But he begrudgingly let me stay on. He got fired for making anal sex jokes about a customer. While she was in earshot. The new manager Feeping hated me from day one. Since I got special treatment because I'm in school. I asked for a day off to go to Six Flags. About two weeks previous. The day comes and he calls me at about 9 and says co-worker called in sick. Need you here. Now. I told him I was on my way to Denver with a group and that I asked for the day off. He huffed and yelled grow the beep up. Get here. Or you can come get your last check. I said I'll be there in an hour. And went to Six Flags. Picked up my last check a couple weeks later and was accused of stealing a coat. It's always been so strange to me. Managers who don't care to work around someone who's in school. I've had a couple. If it's gotta come down to my education to keep myself from having to work at a grocery store forever. And the grocery store where I get paid minimum. They seem to think they'll rank supreme. Yeah I hate to see it. My last bosses hired school kids for busy times. So some of them might go a few weeks between shifts. School holidays were a really busy time and then the boss would get annoyed when kids wanted time off then because the kid would going on a holiday with her family they were all girls. I suggested she stop hiring kids from the nice private schools and start hiring kids from poorer families that don't go overseas or to the holiday house in summer. Honestly. If kids taking off for you know, Kids things is a problem. Just. Don't hire kids LMAO. I had a manager get super annoyed because she mucked up the schedule thinking all of the high school kids went back after winter break much later than they did. And ended up having to redo the whole thing because the staff for some days were mostly the high school kids. I was hired by the new owners to replace the existing manager. I was under the impression that he was moving on to another job somewhere. So after about four days I ask him where he's headed and if he's excited. He just looks blankly at me and says I'm not going anywhere. I'm just training you as the assistant manager. Right. The look I gave him must have been a great tip off because he got up and walked into one of the new owner's offices. After about 30 seconds they were screaming at each other. Then he just storms out of the office. Grabs his stuff. Give me the finger and leaves. Over the next few days I'm trying to calm things with the employees. They're not faulting me. But now have a very bad taste in their mouths about the new ownership. Over about a 7 to 10 day time period my team shrank from 15 people down to 3. I hobbled along with that the best I could while we tried to hire new people. But the new owners were offering so little we had trouble finding people. After three months or so of that I started to get fed up and overwhelmed and when the owners started to get on me about missed deadlines I had had it. We were still only at five people. Two of which were brand new and still training. They didn't allow me to refuse work or push deadlines out. They expected the same output as a 15 person team. So after my third day in a row of being berated for missing a deadline that was impossible to make. I quit. We're giving you the same workload the company had before but while giving you less resources. One third of the people and paying peanuts. Why are you not getting results you incompetent bastard? There's a comic that I've seen that applies to a lot of companies. It's got a team of executives at a boardroom table on an old Viking style row ship with one guy rowing and a bunch of empty seats. One of the executives is saying. I don't get all the budget cuts. Why aren't we moving faster? 
A lot of companies unfortunately do not see the long-term gains of a happy and well-trained workforce. They see the short-term gains on paper by cutting people and run with it. That's mostly because the people in charge don't give a speep. The board of directors is looking for money plain and simple. The CEO is looking for one to two years of record profits then jumping ship to do it again. No one is really trying to make companies that last just ones that make a crap ton of money and fall apart. We're seeing something similar in horse racing. Some time ago. Breeders realized that there was way more money in breeding than in winning. But no one wants to breed a loser. So they breed horses that will have brilliant but short careers. Rather than having modest but long careers. This means if I may be allowed to oversimplify a bit more muscle and less bone. They're also being pushed to race more often. And over medicated to mask incipient problems. Consequently. We've seen a sharp rise in lethal injuries on the track.